as we spur that name. <laughs> Walking horse equitation. Webster defines equitation as the art of riding on horseback. Although judging an equitation class focuses on the skills of the rider, the horse is a very important prop. The equitation class is really a judge communication class. Communication between a well-positioned, thoughtful rider and a well-trained cooperative horse. Although all styles of equitation share common guidelines, the walking seat equitation is unique because of the exaggerated stride of the Tennessee walking horse and the change in balance brought about by this unique quality. Here to talk about walking seat equitation is Terry Mosley, walking horse trainer and an equitation instructor who coached the winner of the last five walking horse trainers auxiliary walking horse report equitation medal finals. This is the most prestigious equitation competition in the walking horse industry. In addition, Terry has been an instructor for the Middle Tennessee State University's Walking Horse Horsemanship School held each summer on the MTSU campus. The Tennessee Walking Horse is a unique breed of horse carrying the blood of the American Saddlebred, Thoroughbred, Morgan, and Standard Bred Horse. Bred primarily as a riding horse, its unique gait commands a riding style somewhat different from all other breeds. Equitation is defined as the art or skill of riding on horseback. Riding, as any other sport, combines the fitness components of rhythm and balance. In order to maintain balance while mounted, a good horse person must be in harmony with the horse's movements. Good horsemanship requires communication between rider and horse in order to maintain balance and rhythm. The balance seat in riding is that position which allows the rider to enhance the optimum performance of the horse. The center of gravity of the rider must remain over the center of gravity of the horse. The unique gait of the walking horse is characterized by a driving back end which places the center of gravity of the horse and rider behind that of most other equitation seats. This requires a seat adjustment in order to maintain balance with the horse's movements. The finished walking seat equitation performance should present a balanced picture between rider and horse. The showroom performance should show a well-polished rider that can communicate with their horse in the three basic gates and through a series of horsemanship tests. Good horsemanship is not just looking pretty. It is a total picture developed through practice and hard work. The goal is for the pretty rider to learn to communicate with their mount in an attempt to become a more knowledgeable and experienced horse person. The rules for walking seat equitation are specific in description of the basic position at all three gates and as to the appearance and appointment of the horse and rider. A brief description of the workout test is included in the rules. The rules for walking seat equitation were the result of efforts by the Walking Horse Trainers Auxiliary and are honored by all the national organizations. Judging of walking seat equitation is a subjective measurement or evaluation of entries. We will attempt to present the basic guidelines in accordance with the rule book. However, there will be small differences of opinion in accordance with an individual's own preference. Walking seat equitation does not require a big licked horse. Horsemanship can be practiced with a flat child plantation horse or a horse that is no longer competitive in a performance class. The key word in walking seat equitation is balance. The walking horse has a unique center of gravity and is shown in a collected manner. The rider should exemplify grace and poise when astride the horse. The rider's basic position in the saddle should be maintained throughout the three gates and any workouts. From the side view, the chin should be up, tilted upward, not looking down at the horse. The shoulders should be straight, should be able to draw a line from the top of the rider's head, through the shoulder, through the thigh, down the back of the leg, to the heel. The forearms should be relaxed, the hands in the upward V position. 
Riding with an exaggerated forearm is definitely to be penalized. Riding with the elbows in or the elbows out is to be penalized. The rider should have a relaxed, graceful forearm parallel to the ground if at all possible. The seat is deep in the center part of the saddle over the horse's center of gravity with the rider sitting up straight. The leg position contact with the saddle comes from the thighs and the knees. With the foot placed in the stirrup, the weight of the foot should be on the pad of the stirrup with the ball of the foot resting on the pad. The toes are turned parallel to the horse or slightly inward, but not out and not turned in at an exaggerated angle. The heel of the rider should be parallel with the ground or in a downward position. The exaggerated downward position, the exaggerated downward heel position indicates that a rider has their stirrup too short. Standing on the toes indicates that a rider has their stirrup too long. Okay. The shoulders should be straight and the rider should be seated on the buttocks. Good position on a horse is not very different from good position in a chair. In order to check the rider's head and shoulder carriage, stand behind the horse. A straight line should be able to be drawn from the top of the head to the midpoint of the saddle cantle. Both shoulders should appear to be at the same height from this vantage point. The basic position should be maintained throughout execution of the three gates and any workouts with only minimal adjustments to facilitate the use of aids in instruction of the horse. Show ring performance includes the preparation of the horse and rider for the ring, as well as the actual performance in the ring. All riders should enter the ring on an equal basis with reference to the grooming of the horse and the correctness of the dress for the rider. The execution in the ring, presentation of the horse and rider, and the psychology involved are all vital components of a blue ribbon performance in an equitation class. Any contestant not conforming to the guidelines for dress shall be eliminated from competition by the judge. The rules for dress are based upon tradition and to many seem conservative. But the principle involved in selection of the habit, the accessories, and the grooming of the rider are based always upon the standards of good taste. The riding habit should be of the two or three button coat styles and of a solid color. This type of habit is correct for daytime and evening wear. The jodfers are of the English variety and must be of the same color and material as the coat. Conservative colors include greens, grays, browns, black, blue, or beige. There are variations of all colors and the rider must choose a conservative and not flashy blend. The habit should be well fitting and should never be too tight for the rider. This constricts movement and makes the appearance of the rider messy. Rules for measuring include to measure the coat length to three inches below the fingertips of the rider when standing. This may have to be adapted for some riders. The coat should cover the cantle of the saddle and rest on the horse's loin, but not cover the croup of the horse. The length of the coat when mounted should be above the knee. The jodfers should be long enough to rest on the top of the boot and cover the back of the heel of the boot when mounted. Jod for underpasses are required in order to keep the pants leg from riding upwards. As conservative as the riding habit is, the rider is allowed an opportunity for individual style in the selection of the accessories. A matching or coordinated man snap rim hat or traditional derby must be worn by all riders in equitation classes. All riders should wear hair nets to keep the hair from straying out from under the hat or around the face. Girls with long hair should pin the hair in a bun at the nape of the neck. A small ribbon placed on the bun is acceptable, but large ribbons or ribbons with streamers are not allowed. A man's tailored shirt of either white or pastel color is worn with the informal habit and a matching or coordinated foreign hand tie. Vests are optional and can either match or contrast with the habit. The individual has allowance in the color selection of the accessories and can suit his or her own style and taste. A spark of color in an otherwise conservative riding habit will show the rider to have some show ring style uniquely their own. Gloves of off-white color or of a color that matches the habit must be worn. Off-white gloves tend to draw attention to the rider's hands, whereas the darker colors do not. 
English dyed for boots must be worn and may be either patent or calf leather. Small round or blunt English spurs and a small riding whip are optional. The semi-formal riding habit is only acceptable as evening wear. Dress rules for equitation follow traditional rules for men's dress. The semi-formal habit is the one-button tuxedo with coat and jodhpurs of matching solid color. The lapels must also be of the same color as the coat. Formal accessories of a top hat, dark bow tie, cummerbund, and gloves are required with this type of habit. Small boutonnieres are acceptable at night, but not for daytime wear. The stress in dress for equitation classes is conservatism in order to show off the horse and the rider. The rider should be well groomed in all aspects of dress and should conform to the standards of good taste. When starting the horse moving forward, the rider should release the rein slightly and squeeze gently by rolling the calf of the leg towards the horse. The movement should be slow and gradual with the collection of the horse after he moves forward. The transition from the flat walk to the running walk should be smooth and easy. There should be a distinct difference between the two gates, but excessive speed at the running walk is not necessary. There should again be a slight release of the reins as the rider applies leg pressure to move the horse forward. As the horse moves to the faster gait, the reins should be collected as necessary to keep the horse in a true four-cornered running walk. The rider should be flexible and in tune with the horse's rhythm, not stiff while executing the flat walk and the running walk. In order to decrease the horse's speed to return to a flat walk, the rider should gently flex the wrist in order to apply bit pressure and then release the rein. There should be very little rider movement in the transitions from the flat walk to the running walk and back to the flat walk. The canter is the most difficult gait for most riders to execute and the most varied gait among the individual animals. The correct signal for the canter is, using the rail leg, apply pressure against the horse's flank. Apply gentle pressure to the rein with the rail hand by flexing the wrist. Slightly release the rein with the inside hand by extending the wrist. Using the inside leg, gently apply pressure to the inside shoulder of the horse. A voice command is acceptable in asking the mount to canter. The rider should not lean forward when applying pressure to the inside shoulder. As the horse begins to canter, the rider should collect the reins as necessary to aid the canter. There is a tendency with walking horses to pump or exaggerate the hand motion in the canter. This will be penalized in equitation classes. Some movement in rhythm with the horse is acceptable. As the horse rolls forward, the rider should release the wrist by extending them. In order to assist the horse as he returns to the upright position, flex the wrist to collect the rein and assist the horse with light bit pressure. The transition from the canter to the flat walk should be smooth and gradual. The rider should apply pressure to the stirrup irons and gently flex the wrist and quickly release the rein. A voice command to walk may make the transition smoother. If the horse must come to a complete stop from the canter, then the rider should quickly execute a gentle start to return to the flat walk. All transitions and execution of gates in walking seat equitation should be smooth and gradual. The rider should look at ease, yet be in control of their mount at all times. There are 11 tests from which judges may choose for workouts in an equitation class. If the class is limited by age division, the tests that can be requested are restricted. But in an open or championship class, any test may be requested of any rider regardless of age. The 11 equitation tests are address for reins, backing, answer questions, performance on the rail, riding without stirrups, change of canter leads, serpentine, demonstration ride of one minute, figure eight at any or all gates, mounting and dismounting, and a change of mounts. When the judge reaches your horse in the lineup, there are several equitation workouts that he has to choose from. The first thing he may ask you to do is to address your reins. Address the reins, please. As you can see, Kim is using a crossed rein, which is required in an equitation class. 
Addressing the reins is a very simple procedure done in several steps. Number one, release the rein and place it on the horse's neck. Pick the buckle up with the right hand. Thread the rein with the left hand. Drop the right bite of the rein to the right side and pick up the cross rein position. You should not need to look at your reins to address them. The judge may also ask you to back your horse in the lineup. The proper way to back is to step up on his feet, back three to four steps, return the horse to his lineup position, set him back on his feet. Always in the lineup, the horse should be standing squarely on all four feet or in the park position. The rider should maintain the basic position and should not be looking at the horse or the judge. The other workouts that can be asked in the lineup, the judge may ask you a personal question about the horse, about tack, about equitation, anatomy of the horse. These questions could range anything from what is this part of the horse called, what is this part of the horse called, do you reverse towards the rail or away from the rail, how do you show your horse in an equitation class. All of this is part of being a good horse person. The last workout that could be asked in the lineup would be to ask the rider to mount and dismount. The proper procedure for dismounting is place the reins on the horse's neck, pick them up in the left hand, remove the right foot from the stirrup, swing across, take the foot out, drop to the ground gracefully, spread the reins on the horse's neck, remain when in contact with the horse by the rein and move to the horse's head. When the judge has told you to remount, you turn facing the horse, keep in contact with the rein at all times, pick up your rein so as to control the horse if he were to move off, turn the stirrup, place your left foot in, bounce one time and up in the saddle. Feel for the right stirrup, Drop your reins and readdress them, picking them up in a cross rein position. There's an alternate method of dismounting that can be used. Drop your reins on the horse's neck, pick them up in the left hand, remove your foot from the right stirrup, swing across the horse, drop down to the ground before removing your left foot. In this method, you also keep in contact with the horse by keeping one hand on the rein and move to the horse's head. These are the workouts that can be asked in an equitation class in the lineup. The judge may request additional work on the rail by any or all riders for the fourth test. It is very important to listen to the instructions that are given for the test. The performance may be at any or all of the three gates. Riders may also be requested to drop their stirrups and perform any or all three gates. The stirrups must be left hanging in the natural position and the rider must maintain good basic leg position throughout the workout. The execution of the basic gates is the same as when riding with the stirrups. Canter lead changes are one of the more difficult workouts and require a great deal of practice. They should be formed down the center of the ring or on the rail, but many show rings require adaptations of this procedure. The judge may specify the number of canter changes to be made and the number of steps to be cantered on each lead. The canter lead changes should be smooth and gradual. It is difficult for some horses to make a quick lead change from one lead to another or to canter from a complete stop. If the horse will not canter from a standstill, allow him to take one or two steps as necessary before asking for the canter. This is acceptable, but it is more effective if the horse will canter from the stop position. There should be no jerking on the horse, and the canter signal should be given in the manner as described, with the rider maintaining good basic position. The schooling of the horse is very important to this workout and the other workout. The horse must know the workout as well as the rider, but must be responsive enough to adapt to any changes that the rider may signal. The serpentine is an S-shaped exercise that can be performed at any gate, flat walk, running walk, or canter. It shows the rider's ability to maneuver and direct the horse. The actual serpentine is a series of half circles executed on alternating sides of an imaginary straight line. 
to canter the serpentine, the horse should be asked to canter on the correct lead for the direction of the half circle. All the half circles should be of uniform size. If the number of half circles is not specified by the judge, then four is sufficient. The demonstration ride of one minute allows each rider the opportunity to exhibit those special skills that he or she performs the best. The workout is to be of the individual's choosing and should last from 45 seconds to one minute. The possibilities are unlimited, but whatever the choice, the workout should show off the rider's assets. A good workout should contain execution of all three gates and any figure work that the rider can accomplish. The workout can be done with or without stirrups. It should be done in the manner best suited to the rider. The one-minute workout should not merely duplicate one of the other tests, such as the figure eight. The workout must be written on cards, and two copies must be carried into the ring by the rider. One card is for the judge, and one is given to the announcer. When learning the one-minute workout, the rider must pay close attention to timing. Because of the variance in show ring size, a rider cannot count on a workout judged by distance on the rail. Counting the number of steps to be executed in each portion of the workout will enable the rider to have a consistent workout with respect to timing, regardless of ring size. Choose a workout that can be executed perfectly by the horse and rider. The rider should be able to walk through the workout on the ground before attempting to execute it while mounted. It should be taught in parts and each part perfected. When the total picture is one of ease and effortless performance on the part of the horse and rider, then the workout is ready for presentation in the show ring. The figure eight workout requires a rider to use leg aids with precision. The figure eight can be executed at any or all three gates, but it is most often requested at the flat walk at the canter. The term eight may be misleading to some riders as the figure eight is really two circles joined by a straight line. The figure eight at the flat walk or the running walk does not require a stop at the center of the two circles, but the rider should slow the horse as he crosses the midpoint to indicate that he has an awareness of his center point. The same leg aids are utilized in the figure eight as in the serpentine. The figure eight at the canter requires a stop at the midpoint for a lead change. The figure eight is best practiced by learning one circle and then the other circle and then joining them together to complete the figure. The most challenging workout is the change of mount. A rider may be asked to change horses with another rider but will not be asked to perform any test on a new mount that has not been performed on his own horse. The manner in which a rider executes the three gates and the workouts in an equitation class can have a direct bearing on the judging of the class. If the horse makes a mistake in the class, do not dwell on this mistake. The rider that assumes a self-assured attitude will seem to be in control. Never let a rider look as if they are having a bad ride. The principles of good showmanship are a must in show ring performance. Riders should be alert for what is happening in the ring around them, but should concentrate on their own performance. Keeping the horse apart from the other competitors and on the rail will make a good impression on the judge. This allows the rider to concentrate on their mount and not to have to worry about passing other horses. Walking seat equitation is a young and growing aspect of the walking horse industry. Talented young riders who follow the rules of good horsemanship and practice good showmanship will be rewarded by the ease with which they manage the execution of the required work. We would like to thank our demonstrators for their participation. Ms. Kim Williams, the 1979, 80, and 81 winner of the Walking Horse Trainers Auxiliary Walking Horse Report Equitation Medal Class, and Ms. Paige Drury, the 1982 and 1983 winner. Their mounts for the demonstrations are Go Boys King of Spades, Kim's Mount in all her championship performances, and Social Climber, owned by the Pomfret Farms of Dickerson, Maryland. <laughs>